going to try and take you again from the dark into the light. And um, so today I want to talk about special days like Father's Day, Mother's Day, celebrations that quite a lot of us don't get a chance to celebrate anymore. We find it difficult because our parents are not there anymore in flesh. So how can I take you today into the light? So, welcome to the awakening. Um, actually, my husband told me to, to do this today, to send out love to those of us that struggle because we don't have a parent, because we're not able to celebrate the same way anymore. But that doesn't make us any less than anyone else. And yet, in some ways, society brings us up to think that we are less than. Society creates these special days for a reason. The world, the media, everything, the system that we're fighting against, that we're standing up against, that this awakening is about, creates all of this in order for us to try to think that we're different, to divide us in some way, I'd say. It's the rule and divide thing. They make you feel inadequate. They want you to feel inadequate. They want you to feel different because the world, the media, society is all about this. It's all about what's on the outside. Now, to a certain extent, I buy into it. That's why I wear wigs. That's why I try to make myself look a little bit presentable, put on a bit of lipstick. No makeup, though. But it's because to a certain extent I buy into it, don't I? Um, we all do because it's the way we've been conditioned. It's the way we've been brought up. What well, we've been brought up to believe. And yet, life isn't like that. Not really. Some people are brought up to believe, and they're Buddhists, that attachments make you suffer and so to take you into the light here how about today instead of suffering instead of feeling unhappy and sad because we don't have what these other people have and we're not able to go out and celebrate because we don't have the physical contact how about we close our eyes and imagine that that parent is here with us holding our hands, smiling at us. Because when you are spiritual, you understand that that's what they are. They are in your animals. They are in nature. They're in your heart. You see, that's the beauty of humanity. Whatever happens to us, <clears throat> to the body, and I try to convince myself and learn this lesson every day, Whatever happens to this body, to this flesh, it doesn't matter. No one can take what's inside of you. So that loving parent that we've lost, that father, that dad, that paternal figure that brought us up and made us laugh and cry and that authority that dad was, your dad, my dad, that dad that taught me the love of animals. And yet that same dad taught me how to feel guilty. That same dad taught me how to blame. That same dad taught me fear from his own post-traumatic stress. Every single person can only teach what they know when they're in the flesh. That same dad has now moved on and it's pure love. I feel it. They are pure love. They're young again. They're working with the Alliance. They're working with the light beings. They're mentoring me in some way. But we are so stuck in the way we were brought up. So again, going back to the darkness, we are stuck. 
and we don't appreciate what we have when we have it. So today the message is very clear. You are just as good as everyone else, even if you don't have a parent, because the media tells you the other way. The media tells you otherwise. The media shows you all the presents that you can go out and buy that parent suddenly. You know, the, the media pushes and pushes your inadequacy. It shows you families together to push you into different spaces, to become unhappy, to become depressed, to, to want to need their medication, to want to need another car, to want to need, to need, to need, to need food, drink, whatever it is that fulfills you because you're empty inside that void. That's what the media does. That's what the world does. That's what the newspapers will be doing today. Pushing it in your face, trying to show you that you are not good enough, that you not, are not adequate. But guess what? Here on Moving On TV, we do the opposite. We tell you that you are the same as everyone else. Neither better nor worse nor just because you lost that identity, that part of you that you created, as the Course of Miracles says, we create everything. You created that father figure. You create everything. You created them the way they were in order to teach you the lessons that you needed to learn. And they were on the planet for as long as they needed to be. One of the things, my father was too scared to leave because he didn't think that I would be able to cope. He wasn't worried so much about my sister because she's strong and grounded and is, knows how to stand on, this, on the ground. And I didn't. I didn't. And I'm still learning. I'm still doing everything I can to learn how to be strong and grounded and I, I couldn't have children and I couldn't adopt because of the way the world is. But I now am learning how to stand tall and since my father died, the opportunities came a lot faster and not only that, I felt freer. Even though it was the biggest, most difficult pain to go through losing that, because he was so entrenched in me, entrenched in my life, entrenched in everything, the rock that I relied on, because I was, to a certain extent, I was wrapped up in cotton wool by my father. I wasn't allowed to breathe because of issues that happened to me. And so my growth was stunted in so many ways. And it created a lot of pain with me and my sister, because she didn't get that. So my father and my mother made a lot of mistakes, like parents do, because they do their best. However, since my father moved on, the pain was intense, but it helped me to find me. Who is Lauren? Who are you? Who are we without this presence in our life, we have to become strong. We have to stand on our own two feet. We have to find our inner strength. And that's what moving on TV and moving on theater is to me. They're my family, they're my kids, they're my creations that I work on every day now in order to create something that is there for me to protect me when I get old. Because the dad is gone now that safety net, that cover, that bubble. Now, parents make mistakes. Dad made mistakes, big mistakes, which caused me a lot of pain and caused my family a lot of pain. But now is the time to move on. This is the awakening, so we're going into the light and today, as I say, I said all of you that have lost a parent because you feel different in some way, because society has taught you that, the media has taught you that, 
you are just the same as everyone else. You are love. The thing is, you've got to find it inside of you. How special you are. You have to find that inside of you. All you did is you lost something that in some ways held you back, it held me back, but in some ways helped you grow. And when it left, then you were free. Imagine how it felt after I got over the grief of dad to know that whatever I do, I, can, I don't have to please him anymore. I don't have to live up to what he wanted me to be. I don't have to um, feel guilty if I make a mistake. My father was in some ways very, very damaged. In some ways he was amazing and very enlightened, but he had a very difficult childhood and a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder. And it, guilt was a big thing with my father. He didn't know any better, and so he, he put it onto others, particularly me as a child. And I worked through that every day. Am I doing something wrong? Am I hurting someone? And this is the awakening. And so to take you into the light, I'm telling you, those of you that do have a parent, I want you to really be grateful today and really, really love them and enjoy that in the moment. But the minute you realize it's just in the moment because they could be gone tomorrow, you could be gone tomorrow. That's the way it is in the flesh, but you'll always be there in the heart. There'll always be that huge spirit and the memories and the love in your heart for that parent that was there, whatever they were, the memories are always there and hopefully a lot of good ones as well as not so good ones. The not so good ones are, are asking you to heal and not to stay back and not let this body get sick or this mind get sick because you learned a lot of negative messages. It's time to move on. Dad taught me the love of animals and the love of humanity in a roundabout way. He taught me the love of humanity. He taught me how not to hurt others. He taught me how to be empathic by not having any empathy whatsoever. <laughs> um, he taught me to, to look at, sometimes people say to me, you know, people have hurt you so much. Why would you want anything to do with them? Well, because that's the way I was brought up. I was brought up to be callous and, and, and to think that my atta the attachments are there to, that they hurt you. But guess what? Those that hurt you wake you up. Those that hurt you, in inverted commas, are there to teach you what you really are, the inner strength you have. And I say thank you to them. Some of them have left and I don't need them. I, I don't need anyone. It's about finding that inner strength. I love my work every day. I love my life. I love my gardening. Um, I, love, I love what I have in this moment. And I'm working day or night and letting go of attachment because whenever anything leaves or anyone leaves, I have a huge attachment that I was brought up to understand that we are connected in body and therefore when someone goes it feels like you've lost an arm or a leg but that's just the way we've been brought up you can't lose anything or anyone and i am saying this to you in order to convince me that part of me that doesn't understand that yet and works on it yesterday i i i shared a massive tragedy a huge tragedy um the, the worst part for me was, how the hell can I comfort my friend? How the hell can I comfort her fiancé after what happened? That was what hurt me more than anything. I didn't understand. How could I? I didn't want to laugh. I didn't want to smile. I didn't want to be happy because I felt disloyal. And then I rang her up and she was in her strength. And I said, I'm always here for you, you know that? I'll always be here for you. But she's a very, very strong character who, who has really learned how to rely on herself for everything. She was very down to earth. And 
calm me down to the point where I was able to let go of that feeling of, oh, I can't be happy today. I can't smile. I can't be in a good space. And so I am doing my work every day for humanity. And so today, let's have a look at the Course in Miracles today. power of decision is my own. The power of decision is my own means today you can do whatever you want. You can mourn that father you lost. You can enjoy the happy memories. You can do your work and distract. You can cry. Whatever you want to do. But as I said, if you ideally love that parent you're with now and do the forgiveness that needs to be done now so that when that parent moves on you'll be free like i am and if you don't know how to do that then please contact me at moving on tv1 at gmail.com because the power of decision is your own and the same with yesterday with the huge grief um, by ringing my friends, I realized that if I'm unhappy and I feel that guilty if I smile and laugh after what that family went through losing those children and losing so much in the fire, then I'm not a good person. Where did I learn that? Probably from dad. <laughs> Probably from dad. In some roundabout way, Dad probably taught me that grief um, means that you've got to feel a lot of sadness all the time. Um, but then on the other hand, it doesn't make sense because dad was an orphan and he was in an orphanage from the age of five. But somewhere along the line, we picked that up, don't we? It could, uh, I think it was probably my mother more because we weren't allowed to talk about death in the house but anyway i'm going to pick out how to stay sane the crazy world card today we are all connected as i said the, the cards are very synchronistic and as i said to you your dad your parent is all of our dads and parents because it's just a body we are all connected anyway so you can't have ownership you can only have ownership if you look at the body and the physical. Then your dad or then your granddad and you celebrate and you enjoy what you have in this moment because they'll be gone tomorrow. And that's how it will be. And you will feel huge grief if you do not understand that we are all connected. Today, I would like you to grow in your understanding that we are all connected. Part of this universe and here to help each other find more peace. When I understand this concept, I feel much better and stay well. I don't blame, I don't punish. I accept that the driver in front of me was so slow is teaching me patience. How can you learn this? By watching and understanding what your fellow man is teaching you. If you're not ready, then choose another card. Today I learned that I am connected to everyone in some way we are all connected okay so we are all connected so your parents if you are spiritual is just on the physical side the parent that brings you into the world and makes you what you are they are not your limbs they are not your body they are in your soul in your spirit and in another incarnate reincarnation they may be your brother your sister um whatever you know if that's what you believe and so they cannot go and they cannot be yours someone taught me that a while ago my dad my mom my cat my house my car all of that is going my body it's not, it's just a body, it's just a cat, it's just a car. Uh, your dad doesn't really mean much to me because I'm not connected in the physical to your dad. 
I'm connected in the physical to my dad. Do you understand? However, that's the body. That's the physical. The awakening is about letting go of the physical. It's about letting go of the attachments because we don't know what's coming from one day to another. We're being taught here to be strong regardless of what we could lose. Those that have left us in body, they'll always be in our hearts today. I'm going to end this talk. Dad always used to say, as sure as God made little apples. And he is with me here today, helping me do this awakening, sending out the love to me and everyone who loved him. You know who you are. That was a very special, unique human being. He had a lot of problems. He had serious post-traumatic stress from the war. He was a little five-year-old orphan that pulled on the heartstrings of a lot of us. He was funny, he was silly, he was horrible. <laughs> he used to sit there in bed sometimes like um, Don Corleone and give us instructions, do this, do that. I was his secretary and, and my sister was, his, was also some kind of maid that did his bidding because that was his culture. He didn't understand inside. But if you really needed him, he would be there for you. If you really needed him. Now, I'm so grateful that I did so much forgiveness work with dad and it was able to move on. Because he made terrible mistakes with me and my sister. He created a huge um, barrier between us. But he's gone now. And everything that dad did that was not okay, as far as I'm concerned, we can learn from that. It's just lessons and mirrors because the power of decision is your own. So if you've got a difficult father, difficult dad, look at them and think they're just children. They're just five-year-old children that were hurt because everyone's been hurt, my darlings. Everyone has been hurt. That's why we're going through so much pain. That's why we're detoxifying because everyone has been hurt. One way or another, the father that we had could only do their best with what they learned. And my father was a five-year-old orphan that was taken away and put into an orphanage when he was five years old and had no love from his father. His mother died when he was born. And that's what brought me into the world and my sister. And that's what brought us up. A father who was so stressed that he couldn't deal with our pain. And he, he just used manipulation and all sorts of techniques that he knew, which of course created havoc. But now's the time to let them go. Your father has done something else to hurt you. Make peace with your parents if you can while they're alive, because once they move on, it's not going to be as easy. I was lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones. I got to write a book with dad and we were able, every time he called me that servant and he said, you came here to write the book, so get on with it. I sat him down and I said, dad, I'm your daughter. I'm not your servant, I'm your daughter. So don't talk to me like that. And then it turned around. Because I had the courage to say that. I knew what was coming. I knew that there was going to be such a huge barrier between me and my sister after this. Because I told dad to be kind to her. I watched and I couldn't heal that rip. There was nothing I could do. Our parents did that to us. They brought us us in a way where we just could not find that connection between us, our parents. But now, as I say, it's the awakening. Now's the time to move on. And I've given it all up to love. Love is my religion. That is it. Empathy, as much as I can have empathy today for every one of you that has a dad, more than anything, I want you to love people like me. 
I want you to send love out to those of us that have been told that we are not good enough, that we are not adequate as you are today. Because of society and because of this, the body, and not what's inside. I didn't want to do this today. I wanted to just sit there and cry. I'm on my own. I didn't go anywhere today. Well, where can I go? My husband's gone to his family, but they're still not comfortable about mixing with other people. Fair enough. That's their culture. I don't agree with it, but that's their culture. So I'm on my own today, and so I do what I love. I do moving on TV. I do my humanity work. I send my love out to every single one of you today. If you are with family and a father, love them. Love them in the moment and be grateful. And do your work with them, the forgiveness work that needs to be done. And if they're not good, then put, if you don't, they're not good for you, then don't be around them. You decide, you judge whatever you feel is right for you in this moment. And to those of you who have lost their dads, that's where my love goes to them, more than anything. All of you victims of wars of sadness, been hurt in any way. Moving on TV is here for you. Those of you that have very little in life, this is your TV station. This is your mainstream media to bring it all up. The hope and the glory is for you to do what you want, your dream. And now I'm going a bit overboard, so I'm going to love you and leave it there. Please send this to anyone you feel may need it today. I'm going to release it today as soon as I can because it's to do with the editing. So it still goes out to all of you on Father's Day to love you. And remember, there's Father Sky out there, <laughs> and that belongs to all of us, and all of you, from the heart, I love you. Let go of your attachments, my darlings. Let go of your attachments, please, and love yourself. And if you can't do that, then please contact me. Bye.